Good morning, everyone, and welcome to the January 2023 uh, uh, Community Breakfast sponsored by the Office of New Haven Affairs at Yale. We're going to get started in a moment, but I have a few uh, announcements uh, that I'd like to share with you before we get started. Uh, <clears throat> as you may know, the university has campus-wide celebrations in honor of Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. Uh, there are a few that I'd like to highlight. One is the uh, annual celebration at the Yale Peabody Museum. Of course, you may know the Peabody Museum is under um, renovation now. So they're having their events on January 15th and 16th in two separate places. One is at the uh, New Haven Museum and the other, uh, actually, I think they're both at the New Haven, no. Yeah. Oh, oh, one is at the Yale Science Building on Whitney Avenue. So I, I will put the details uh, in the chat along with the details for the rest of the announcements. But they are hosting their events on January 15th and 16th in a hybrid format. So you can register to view the events online or you can register to uh, join in person. It will feature storytelling and dance on the 15th and on the 16th they're famous poetry slam event. Uh, uh, so um, seating is limited on the in-person event. So I suggest that you, if you're interested, go online and register now. The highlight of our celebration and commemoration of Reverend King is our annual um, keynote address. This year's feature speaker is Martin Luther King III. This will take place on Wednesday, January 18th at 5.30 at Woolsey Hall. Uh, we hope you all will join us. It's a free event. Uh, so uh, registration is required. I will put that link in the chat. Uh, Mr. King will provide the keynote speech and he will also be joined in conversation with Yale's professor, James Foreman, who is the J. Skelly Wright Professor of Law at the Yale Law School. It's gonna be a fantastic event. We hope you will join us. Again, it's free and open to the public. Masks are required. And lastly, the Yale University Hiring, New Haven Hiring Initiative has launched an employment readiness program in collaboration with the Dixwell Community House. Uh, they, one of the features of this collaboration are a series of workshops to raise awareness of oppor employment opportunities around the city. There are a few that are coming up that are uh, highlighting uh, local, uh, opportunities. So on January 23rd, uh, the university's library collection services and operations will uh, provide information. The hospital will be joining on the 6th. And then on the 20th, the Yale Medicine Care Center will be joining. Uh, so there are uh, registration signups. I will put the link in the chat. Please share this and all of the announcements that I have provided. <clears throat> that is. I'm just trying to find my everything. Yeah, just one second. Let me make sure I have the, I can shut this down because the, Zoom is going wonky on me. So forgive me one moment. Here we are. Thank you. So without further ado, I want to introduce the speakers that are joining us to um, tell us all about um, the Beinecke Library's uh, upcoming events um, and collections that will be on display. The Beinecke, as you may know, is open to the public. We encourage everyone to join. Uh, and I'm glad you are here to learn more about um, the exciting events that are coming up this year. Joining us this year are Jennifer Coggins, Tobias Cropper, Aya Machik, and Michael Morand. And I will hand it over to Mike Morand. Thank you, Karen. It's good to be in this virtual space with everybody. Uh, and uh, Happy New Year. You're going to hear a little bit from Jennifer, Aya, and Tobias in that order. But I wanted to start by a little bit of background and a little bit of events. And then I'll close with uh, what we've got coming up this month. Uh, one thing to note is that Beinecke has been reimagined under the leadership of university librarian Barbara Rockenbach and new Beinecke director Michelle Light. 
Manuscripts and Archives, a great collection, is now part of Beinecke. So Beinecke is uh, enlarged and reimagined. The collections are uh, connected and unified more, which is fantastic for us and for users. And we also have reorganized and, and expanded the staff by bringing Beinecke and the uh, previous Manuscripts and Archives staff together, including the Fortunov Video Archive. So it's really exciting time, and we are blessed to have a dedicated community engagement unit, a department that I had, and that really reflects the commitment that the institution has, that Barbara and Michelle and all of us at Beinecke and Yale Library have to working with all of you. And I wanted to set the stage for our discussion by, there we go. Uh, a little bit of big picture thinking. What you see on screen is something that you all know, and this actual picture of the iconic Bunshamp building happens to be the top result on Google Images for Beinecke, and it's the featured image on Wikipedia. And it really exemplifies the power of this place. People know it. Uh, if you say Beinecke uh, here and around the world, it's something that a lot of people know. And if, and if they don't know it, if you mention, oh, that marble building without windows, uh, they sort of know what it is. And so it's a great thing. And we all enjoy coming to work here. And I hope all of you enjoy coming to visit the place. But what we're about is not just the building. The building's great, but it's the starting point, not the destination. It's the catalyst. And our job in community engagement is to bring the people into the place. You see some snapshots of things in recent months uh, in the classrooms and in the reading rooms. Uh, the one on the left is with colleagues from Concorp, I think. Uh, and on the right, one of our many events that we're having in the reading room, including there's one coming up on Monday. And we are here not only to bring people into the place, but more and more to bring the place out to the people, to do partnerships, with our colleagues, uh, all of you and folks throughout New Haven in libraries, community groups, schools. The image that you see here is of the exterior walls. Anybody who's been by Beinecke since November of 2020, when in the height of the pandemic, we were in complete shutdown, we decided to literally bring things out to the public by putting these great images uh, from Carl Van Vechten's photographs uh, of many people who were represented in the collections on the outside. And it sort of exemplifies how we like to bring the place out to the people. And this involves work where we're really, really looking to encourage use of our collections, especially as sources of historical reckoning and, and restorative justice. We're ramping up our events and programs, both online, online and on site, our tours and other visitor experiences. Key in all of this, is developing really robust and sustained partnerships with community groups, schools, and libraries. And you'll hear a little bit about this, and many of you are involved in this work uh, with us or from Yale units that are doing this. And we're looking to continue to network amongst ourselves and uh, on campus and network with our neighbors throughout New Haven. And I want to give a shout out to Karen and everybody in New Haven and State Affairs who helped be the, as it were, the the constellation uh, mappers for us in this, uh, all the bright stars in New Haven and at Yale bringing us together. And part of our group is also the Wyndham Campbell Prizes and Festival, and I'll give you the dates for next year's festival at the end. So we're about visitor services, community partnerships, and communications. And this is another example of some of the community partnerships. This is a photograph from September from the Dixwell Avenue United Church of Christ Bicentennial Plus Two. Dixwell, as many of you know, is the oldest black congregational church in the nation and didn't celebrate its bicentennial in person back in 2020 for obvious reasons. And so had this fantastic celebration in the fall. This is an event where we gathered at Grove Street Cemetery across the street from Beinecke where a number of the founders and early figures of Dixwell Church, Bias and Margaret Stanley, Robert Park, uh, the Creed family, many others are buried, Prince Duplex, uh, and we had a ceremony. And then we came to Beinecke to look at records of many of these people, archives of papers made by, signed by, about 
the Stanleys, about Amos Beeman and his scrapbooks, an early pastor of the church. And that was both an event for the church itself, but we opened it to the public uh, as well that day. And that's an example of connecting the collections to the community. And in that case, collections of the community that we steward here at Beinecke Library. And I don't expect you to read this list and it's uh, illustrative, not exhaustive, but it's an example of just in the past year of the groups on campus and in the community that we've been working with and growing this uh, set of relationships as we look to bring people into the Beinecke and bring the Beinecke and Yale Library Special Collections out to the community. And uh, we can add more to this and hope to do that with your help. We're, just to give you a quick sense, we're now fully reopened, open seven days a week here at 121 Wall Street. As all of you know, the exhibition hall on the ground floor and mezzanine functions as a museum, free and open seven days a week. And I hope if you haven't been here yet, the, the month is young, the year is young. I hope you all have as a New Year's resolution to come to Beinecke soon. We had eight events uh, in the first six months of this fiscal year from July to December. We continue to do a lot online, as I hope you know. Sign up for our email newsletter if you're not already. And just as an example online, we continue to get great attendance. We had uh, uh, more than 2,300 people live for our Mondays at Beinecke this past fall. And most important, we're seeing really great numbers in person. So we had 70,000 plus people come through the doors, the revolving doors to the exhibition hall in the first six months. And that's actually much higher than in 2019, the last similar time before the pandemic. So we're ahead of uh, pre-pandemic numbers in terms of people coming to the exhibition hall, which is really great. And I wanna thank all of you who helped encourage people to come to this place to visit. So, but I wanna turn it over to some of the work that we're doing to bring the place out to the people to bring the people into the place and to uh, network with all kinds of folks, uh, first and foremost, all of you. So let me turn it over to Jennifer and then I'll have a few words, Tobias will have a few words and show a little video and I'll come back at the end with a couple notes of programs and events and look forward to questions. So Jennifer, over to you. Thanks, Mike. Good morning. Um, I'm Jennifer Coggins, and I'm the Community Engagement Archivist at the Beinecke. And in my role, which was created uh, this summer, I'm focused on engaging the New Haven community, not only with the collections that we have here at the Beinecke, but more broadly with archives practices and with local history and making connections with um, local history organizations and collections across the city. One component of this is a program that's currently in development that I'm very excited about um, that is to support New Haveners in preserving their own personal, family, and organizational records. The goals of this program are to first you know, support individuals and organization, uh, organizations in the preservation of their records so that those records remain accessible to them, their families, uh, and their communities going forward. And this is done in a way that's tailored to um, particular goals, not dependent on on transferring the materials to an institution or dependent on whether the records would be made widely accessible, um, but thinking about what people's individual goals are for the materials that they've created or that are in their care and helping them to uh, achieve those goals. And by doing this, we hope to promote the preservation of a more thorough, representative, and diverse record of New Haven history. And we also hope to promote awareness of archives practices, uh, the options that are available for caring for records, and the resources that are available locally and at the state level and beyond to support that work. We want people to be informed and empowered to preserve the records that are important and meaningful to them, whether those are family photographs, um, social media content, that they've created uh, or um, their organization's Google Drive of records. Um, and we also want to engage more people in thinking archively about the records uh, in their care and that they've created um, and sort of create more archivists in that way. Um, and also we want to uh, continue to develop a strong local community of practice around archives and, and New Haven history. Next slide. 
And we're finding uh, opportunities to partner with our neighbor libraries, museums, and other history organizations and bring people together around New Haven history, promoting New Haven related collections and emphasizing local history in our pro public programming and looking for connections between our collections and those held elsewhere and really highlighting those connections and building on them. And one example is pictured here, uh, Dictionary Day 2022, uh, which is an event commemorating Noah Webster's birthday. Um, and at this event, we brought together materials from across Yale Special Collections related to Noah and Rebecca Webster and New Haven in their time. And we, uh, on this event, we partnered with the New Haven Museum to also highlight their excellent collections related to the Websters and to New Haven in that time and cross promote the open house events that, that we held uh, and to reach new audiences. And we plan to build on that for next year, um, bringing together related materials from from across repositories in New Haven um, and, and building on the success of, of 2022. And in all this work, we welcome input uh, as it develops. And so if you have thoughts on services that would be useful uh, or other suggestions, please feel free to, to contact uh, one of us directly. And we'd love to talk with you. Thank you. Hi, thank you, Jennifer. Good morning, everybody. I'm really glad to be here uh, with you this morning. My name is Aya Marczyk. I'm a, the Curriculum Development Fellow formerly at the Fortune of Video Archive and currently both the Fortune of Archive and the Beinecke Library. Uh, my background uh, is in European intellectual history and history education. And so I bring that work to our programming and thinking about how we can bring the collections out to schools and support teachers in, uh, in meaningful ways. Uh, what I'm going to do first is just drop a link to our curriculum at the Fortune of Archive if you'd like to look at that a little bit later. Um, but just to highlight a few of the things that I'm working on, and I feel very privileged to be working in close collaborations with New Haven teachers and with other teachers throughout uh, Connecticut. And if we could move to the next slide. Thank you. Um, so the curriculum work is really uh, focusing on this challenge. How do we bring out the collections? in meaningful and rigorous ways to classrooms, high school classrooms, middle school classrooms, um, and invite students to very deep, authentic historical thinking with them. Um, and that's a very interesting, challenging, but also powerful moment right now, right? On one hand, there is a lot of, I would say just suffering in the schools. You know, people use the word crisis, but, but there's just a lot, no, no need to go into detail, right? With the pandemic. At the same time, there's a lot of incredibly powerful energy of people, uh, both students and teachers organizing for justice and organizing for better curricula. So with that, our first unit at the Fortune of Archive was one that focused on uh, race and citizenship. Um, and that was a comparative unit looking at Nazi Germany in the 1930s and Jim Crow in the United States. And we um, used both primary sources from our collection and scholarship and input from teachers to make that come alive in a web-based kind of curriculum. And that's the link that I shared, and I will leave that for you to explore. Uh, we will have a session on this in May, early May, May 4th, uh, in these community breakfasts. So if anybody would like to come to that and learn more, that will be a, a time to do it. Other projects we're working on is an oral history curriculum that will start with the fortune of collection to kind of unearth and show how these testimonies were collected and what that means for uh, thinking about working with both the Holocaust collection, but also more broadly oral histories and oral histories in the community. Uh, there's a couple of projects underway on bringing historians debates into high school classrooms. And again, really close connections there with teachers who are trying to support students in working with not, not only primary sources, but also secondary sources, analyzing them and, and thinking how historians debate um, big questions and how to invite students in a really um, open and meaningful way into that. And what we're focusing on next, and, and this, this will evolve over the coming months, and we would love your ideas and input on this as we go, is to develop materials on Black history in New Haven, possibly around the history of William Grimes, but also other local histories um, and then bring that into schools. So I think I'll stop here for now. There is, uh, we have ongoing programming for teachers, professional learning um, development uh, throughout the school year, as well as in the summer, we have a summer institute planned here in New Haven in June. Um, so happy to uh, say more about that in the Q&A and I will pass it on to Tobias. Thank you, Aya. 
Hello, everyone. Good morning. It's a pleasure to be with you. Uh, my name is Tobias Cropper, and I have the privilege of being the Community Engagement Program Manager here at the Beinecke. And uh, I'll be talking to you a little bit about sort of how we connect the collections to the people. Um, the city itself is full of such rich history, along with the Beinecke, um, with institutions that highlight all of the history that we have. So ultimately, to reach our goal of having New Haven become that town known, I'm sorry, known for its special collections, we have to bridge that gap between the citizens and the students that do know the local history and those that don't. And we do that by continuing to offer those collections to the people in uh, multiple ways, right? In the past, we have been a library that has always accommodated groups uh, for visits to the library and its classrooms and interacting with material. But now we're doing more of bringing the library to the people. And that happens through consistent collaboration that Michael talked about in the beginning, giving you that short list uh, or long, however you look at it, list of, of people that we've worked with so far. Um, and that includes museums, libraries, historical society, schools, and everything in between. Um, so historical knowledge really is a privilege and everyone has a right to that privilege. And, and what are what is one of the ways that we bring it to the people? Uh, next slide, Mike. Video. Video is today's world. Uh, seeing is believing. And we've increased our efforts to produce high quality video that accurately portrays the stories that have uh, existed in New Haven. And this is just an example here uh, this past, what was it, November or, or, or the past year, I mean, uh, we released the documentary about the nation's first HBCU that never happened in 1831 that was supposed to be in New Haven. Some of you might be familiar with the story, others may not. Um, and I'm quickly just going to show you a trailer to this uh, to give you an idea of what it's about and continue from there. Did you know that New Haven could have been home of the nation's first HBCU? What follows is the story of a path-breaking plan for a black college in New Haven in 1831, and of the opposition that stopped it from happening. So that quick trailer is really just to uh, give you an idea of how we're really bringing these stories to life. It was great collaboration between Yale and Slavery Research Group uh, and other local historians and enthusiasts who helped uh, contribute ideas to you know, make this story as real as possible. Uh, when it comes to history, it is one of those subjects that may not be received well by many people. And that's just because people presume it to be ancient history, right? Very long ago. Uh, however, a lot of history is still fairly recent, um, but very relevant at the same time. And, and that's what we're trying to get at here at the library. Um, beyond that, next slide, please. Um, we're doing other work too, right? We, we care about the students. Like I said, historical knowledge is a privilege and everyone has a right to that privilege. And that younger generation needs that historical knowledge now more than ever. Uh, we say here that history might not repeat itself, um, but it certainly rhymes. And children today need to be educated on, on the proper history. So uh, and after to do that, as you can see, we're pairing with the Yale Pathways to Arts and Humanities uh, to create the Beinecke's first summer, co summer cohort that I'm leading uh, with some um, Beinecke staff uh, one in particular uh, curator, Kevin Rep, who will be uh, hosting an art in protest exhibition in the fall of 2023, which will sort of be the base of the program, along with working with some exhibition prep members and giving them that full experience. Uh, it's for two weeks, two cohorts, two different groups of students uh, that will be around 15 high schoolers, ranging from sophomores to seniors, to get that archival experience, curatorial experience, exhibition work, et cetera. Um, and I think students today can relate a lot to protests that have happened in the past. 
a lot of the art, a lot of very important and creative opinions have formed from historical pro protests um, and, and civil rights to gay rights to everything in between. Those students will not only get that historical knowledge, but will hopefully engage with it uh, on a relatable level because today there's still a lot of contemporary ideas being conveyed through art and protests that they can benefit from with this knowledge. And looking long-term, we want to plant seeds later um, and sort of grow these students into historical gems who will sort of pass on the message of how important archival work is and, and spread that throughout their own high schools as we also do work to collaborate with high schools. And I will stop there for now. Thank you. Thank you all. And I wanted to give uh, some uh, items that you can all act on and engage with. Before I do, just to close, you know, give a, give tie together some of the great things that you heard from Jennifer, I, and Tobias. We here with neighbors in New Haven have a very bold vision. Ours is an extraordinary community with amazing primary resources. There are few communities of our size that have as much as we have. Special collections at Yale have amazing things related to New Haven. The museums at Yale, Southern Connecticut State has grown its special collections, the papers of recent mayors of New Haven. The New Haven Museum is 10 times the size and scope and impact of most museums like it in communities of our size, an extraordinary resource in both its museum and in the Whitney Library. The Ethnic Heritage Center and the five organizations that are part of it, the Freedom Trail, the cemeteries, on and on and on. We have such extraordinary resources available to us all around in a very compact place. It's a benefit that we're not LA. So if we wanna set a goal that we are the community that does local history and uses primary sources that more and more and the most kids use primary sources, we can do it because we've got these extraordinary assets across the community in a fairly compact place. So that's sort of a big, bold goal. We're not gonna achieve that all together in 2023, but think about the nation's 250th birthday is coming up in 2026. It's not that far from now, but what if we set a goal sort of collectively as a community that by 2026, we really are the place that people look to when they think about what communities do in history and local history and primary sources the most, they think of New Haven. We are a place known as a place of pizza and of archives. We can do it. But some things to think about coming up, Next Monday on January 16th, we will renew our in-person on-site one-day displays of materials related to the Reverend Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. and the long civil rights movement. You will see when you come, if you can come on Monday noon to four, the fruits of Beinecke and manuscripts and archives being merged together. There'll be all kinds of material. So if you happen to come to this display in 2020 or 2019 when we did it in the past, I can promise you, you'll see new things that reflect uh, some really extraordinary stuff of visits by Dr. King to campus, visits by Coretta Scott King to campus and to New Haven, uh, and lots of other really amazing things. So I hope you can come to that. It's in person, Monday, noon to four. Our Mondays at Beinecke will begin online on Monday, January 23rd at 4 p.m. It will feature uh, two of the people you heard, Jennifer and Tobias, along with Scott Lipson, the Special Collections Librarian of the Divinity School, and it will focus on Martin Luther King at Yale and visits that he made to uh, New Haven and to Yale in 1959, 1962, and 1964 uh, in particular. And then uh, in a couple of weeks on Friday, February, uh, January 27th at 5 p.m., again, in person here in the exhibition hall, we will have the opening reception for a new building-wide exhibition. Also, look, the video that Tobias showed a trailer, he and uh, colleagues at the New Haven Museum are looking at doing a screening of that at the New Haven Museum uh, in the uh, months ahead. So watch for that. Uh, more to come from us from New Haven Museum, and I'm sure Karen will share that as well, uh, and an opportunity to engage with uh, some of the things that they have. They have a great show on view right now about New Haven in 1822, so make a point of getting to the New Haven Museum. 
Uh, and then put a put a pin in the calendar for Wednesday, July 5th, our annual reading of Frederick Douglass and the Declaration of Independence, again, on site in person at the library. Uh, and the dates for the Wyndham Campbell Festival are Wednesday, September 20th is the keynote lecture and the prize ceremony, September 21st, Thursday, and September 22nd, the Friday. So that week in September, mark those three days out, the evening of September 20th, and mark all day September 21 and 22 for Wyndham Campbell Festival events on campus at uh, other cultural venues on campus in addition to Beinecke, as well as in the public library and around town. And we work very closely with Co-op High School. Again, MLK Day, if you're in town, noon to four. Uh, one of the benefits for those who aren't right downtown, uh, it's a holiday, so parking's free close to the library. Uh, so that's an added benefit and incentive for those who uh, drive and need to find a place to park. Uh, and as I mentioned, our next show is opening on January 27th. We'll be on view through July 9th, free and open seven days a week. And I hope you know that we're open Mondays to Thursdays till seven. So we've got some after uh, typical work hour times that folks can come in noon to five on uh, Saturdays and Sundays. We have tours every Saturday for the public, 1.30 and 3 p.m. Don't have to register for them, just show up. And likewise, if you have visitors in town and want to send them over this way or come with them, uh, anybody's welcome uh, at 1.30 and 3 o'clock on Saturdays. And then quick notes, and I'll, I'll stop, uh, of exhibitions upcoming. So next one, Revisiting the Past, Imagining the Future, opening on January 27th, is going to feature a number of different parts of the collection and mostly recent acquisitions. Uh, that doesn't mean that they're, they're new things. There'll be some new things and things made recently, but there'll be some old stuff that's been recently acquired. It'll be a really interesting show with lots of different formats and different types of collections. So I hope you'll come. I think you'll find something that you'll look at and say, oh, I know about that. And you'll find lots of stuff that you say is like, oh, that's interesting. I want to know more. The next exhibition this year is opening on August 4th and will run just past the winter holidays into the beginning of next calendar year. So August 4th through January 7th, 2024. And Tobias did a great job at highlighting that. It's going to be on art protest in the archives, particularly 20th century, some coming into 21st century. Your local university rare book library happens to have the greatest collection of European protest art of the 20th century outside of Europe, some really amazing things. And we've got really extraordinary works from across the US and all kinds of communities uh, across the US. So that will be an interesting show, very visual, uh, as you can tell from the title, and it will also feature a lot of work on vinyls outside as well as work inside. And we've begun conversations with lots of uh, folks around town for uh, ways that we can catalyze program, not only in the library, but uh, in New Haven. So if you have thoughts about that, be in touch. And then finally, a teaser, a year from now, in January 2024, through the summer, July 2024. So 12 months from now for six months, we are gonna have an epic show that will feature works by Frederick Douglass, James Baldwin and Ollie Harrington, four coll three collections that come from the extraordinary American collector, uh, Dr. Walter Evans and his wife, Linda Evans that are here at Beinecke probably the greatest collection of Frederick Douglass and his family that came a couple of years ago. Uh, really amazing early manuscripts and letters of James Baldwin. And Ollie Harrington may not be a name that you know, but was an early Black graduate of uh, the Yale School of Art, who was a cartoonist and a comic artist, both in the US and then actually lived in exile from the US uh, after uh, World War II. So interesting character who you may not know about, but. Uh, Baldwin, Harrington, and Douglas. It will be a great show. Hope you'll uh, think about that. And again, we'll be looking for lots of programming that we do with uh, neighbors around New Haven, uh, cultural heritage partners on campus. So let us let me stop and see if you have thoughts, uh, questions, and comments. Obviously, we'll take some now. Hopefully, you know how to get in touch with us. And I uh, hope to see you on Monday or sometime soon on site. See you around town and see you online a lot.
Taryn, thanks again for the opportunity. And we look forward to engaging with uh, any thoughts, questions, and comments folks have. Sure. Thank you. And thank you all for joining us, Jennifer, Tobias, Aya, and of course, the wonderful Michael Morant. Um, and you can, um, we invite you all to ask questions. You can unmute yourselves. You can raise your hand. You can drop your question, comment, observation in the chat as well. Okay, here I go. I said I wasn't going to do it this year, but good morning. Good morning. I just want to say this has really been informative. It is not what I have um, expected from Beinecke. Um, to me, it had always been a very, um, oh, I don't know, not standoffish, but you know, at a level where you really had to go in and know what it was that you were looking for instead of the information being brought out so you could look and say, oh, I would be interested in that. So I'm very happy that you are opening things up for the community to let everyone know, hey, we're sitting here with all this valuable information and you, you need to learn about it. New Haven is a wonderful place, but we need to learn what, what made it New Haven. So thank you. Well, thank you, Tomasine. And I have to say, you know, I, I went to school at Yale. I, I uh, uh, didn't spend much time in Beinecke myself when I was an undergraduate. So even as an undergraduate back in the day, it felt like, even if you were part of Yale, it could feel like something that, am I allowed in there? Do I need, you know, an invitation? Uh, and uh, I'm glad, thank you for uh, reflecting on, on, on the way things uh, have been and, and uh, commenting on, on the sense of how things are. Yeah, we, we want to be known as the rare book library that is, is open to all. We are free and open to all on site. Uh, and as noted, we want to take things out. We've done a lot digitally uh, and really are keen. And this works because of people like you who are also ambassadors and take this word out. So we all benefit when we work together in this kind of way. I appreciate the, those comments really starts our day off. Really great to hear that from you. Any other questions? You can also share if you have visited uh, Beinecke, some of your um, experiences just to inform others who may not have been there about um, how wonderful it is to step into the building. I put in the chat the link to the Beinecke website so you can quickly get to the calendar. Uh, if you're not on the mailing list, there's a, a place where you can uh, get to the Yale subscriptions. And you can also find a number of resources uh, related to local history. Um, and if you go to our YouTube channel, you can see the video that Tobias uh, showed lots of good things in all of our online events. We uh, record and publish on YouTube. So there's lots of materials uh, available there. So if you're ever in trouble sleeping at night, our digital library and collections uh, uh, will give you lots of material. If you want to procrastinate at work, uh, we've got lots of things to offer. Don't tell them I said that, Chris. <laughs> well, I want to thank you all for joining us. I want to give an extra thanks to Jennifer Coggins, Tobias Cropper, Aya Machik and Michael Moran for joining us as our wonderful um, co-hosts pre uh, presenting wonderful information about the Bonnecke Library. We hope to see you all um, this year and years to come. Thank you very much. Enjoy your January. We hope to see you next month on the first Thursday of the month. Thank you. Thanks. Bye -bye. Thank you. Thanks, Mike and team. Bye. Thank you, everybody. It's great to be here. Bye.